Hello all and welcome to the SMAC training. This is our first virtual SMAC training. We are going to have several of these throughout the year. Uh, we're recording this so that we can also share it on the web so that anybody who's interested will be able to view this. We're going to start off and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some rules and some things that we're going to do in terms of making this productive. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm David Hopper. I am the club growth director. So we'll show you the agenda here. So our agenda tonight is the first five minutes. We're going to talk about Zoom meeting etiquettes and tips. Then we're going to go into DTM requirements for a sponsor, mentor, and coach. Then we will have our club sponsor one-on-one, club mentor one-on-one, -on -one, club coach one-on-one, -on -one, each one followed by a 10-minute question and answering period. And then we will have five minutes at the end for more questions. Zoom meeting etiquette tricks. So we will stick to our timed agenda uh, in, uh, so that we can respect everybody's time. At the bottom of the screen, that's where you can get all, all your information for the mute, stop video participants. All participants are muted by the host. And as we go through, we will sh I'll show you how to ask questions. The participants, if you click on your participant name, you can hover above your name and click rename. That way we can actually see who's asking questions and we can, uh, the other participants can also see who's online. So make sure you rename yourself in the, the side chat. I'll interject here. This is Christy Hopper. There's a couple of people online who are named as phone numbers only. So they could go into the participant window and click on their phone number and give themselves their name to identify themselves. You can stop and start your video by clicking the stop and start video function. Uh, you, that way, if you want to be seen, you can see that. Uh, you can also hit the chat button. The chat button at the bottom of your screen allows you to chat and ask questions. Please submit all your questions into the chat window, and we will be at answering those at the end of each session. But if you have a question anytime in between, just put it there. To leave the meeting, you can click the leave the meeting at the far right side of the, the screen. For phone users, you ha have the, the, at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see the controls at the bottom except for the leave, which is at the top right corner. While in the meeting, you can tap participants and that's where you're gonna get your chat button at the, once you hit participants on your phone. All right, now we're gonna talk about the DTM requirements for sponsor, mentor, and coach. So in the traditional program, your DTM requirements are, you had to do speeches and club roles. So your speeches were CC, C, C, ACB, ACS, and ACG. Uh, your club roles were the CL, and you had your ALB, which was serve as six months as a club officer, and give two speeches from the Better Speaking Series. Your ALS, you had to be a district officer for one year, complete an HPL, and do a mentor, sponsor, or coach. For pathways, you have to complete two complete paths, that's one, levels one through five, become a club officer for 12 months, be a mentor or coach, and be a sponsor, speech crafter, youth leadership. So they've actually split mentor, coach, and sponsorship from in the Pathways program. You also have to serve as a district officer for one year and complete a DTM project. So you can see that sponsor, mentor, and coach are very important in terms of the requirement for both traditional and Pathways DTM. For this year only, the coach counts as a district service credit also. I want to introduce the other people who are gonna be helping you on this call. Uh, like I said before, I'm the club growth director and that's my email, cgd at aztoastmasters.org. 
Nancy Duckett is the club extension chair. She's going to be talking to you about sponsors and mentors. And her email is newclubs at aztoastmasters.org. And Christy Hopper is the club assist chair, and she will be talking to you about club coaches. And her email is clubassist at aztoastmasters.org. With that, we're going to go into Club Sponsor 101, which is Nancy Duckett's. So Nancy, are you, uh, we're going to unmute you here in a second. Well, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, this session is going to be basically about what is a sponsor mentor. There'll be a future session on going into more detail about sponsors and mentors. So next slide, please. Okay, what does it mean to be a club sponsor? One thing I'd like to emphasize about being a club sponsor is you're a member of a team. You're not out there alone. There is a club growth team. You have the club extension chair to help assist you with information and resources and answer questions. The other, the other point that I'd like to make is that there are two sponsors as well as two mentors for each new club. Many times the sponsor, one club sponsor could be, let's say if it's a corporate club, they might be from the company. Typically we'd like to have in that case, another club sponsor that is a experienced Toastmaster. Additionally, there are two club mentors and the mentors are appointed by the club growth director and district director. And there's a very good reason for that because obviously as many of you know, that there is quite a list for those who need to complete a sponsor or a mentor role requirement. It's important to know too that on the club charter forms, there's a form one, the application to organize when the club is this new club has decided that it will be organizing, that there are two spaces, and that's the that there's a spot for sponsors to be listed. The mentor spot should be left blank, and the district uh, will will make that appointment. But the one thing I want to emphasize is that there is a team, so sponsors and mentors can work together in helping a new club to charter. Additionally. There are area directors and division directors, ultimately, when the club does charter. The next point I'd like to make is that, as a club sponsor, you're a guide for the success of a new club. And that's where it's really important to review and read up on the information on how to build a new club. There's a new club information kit. and uh, David, I'm assuming we could send out an email to all those who attended this session with the resource guide with the item numbers and that can be downloaded from the Toastmasters International site. Nancy, absolutely. We can send out full kits for all three, um, all three opportunities. Okay, that would be great. So then everyone will have that opportunity to, to find those resources. In the new club information kit, which by the way is free, contains all about Toastmasters, a brochure, brochures on finding your voice, your path to leadership, and there are flyers and there on benefits of membership and features and benefits. And one of the things that we add to our new club information kit are the, is the pathways flyer that includes information about the 11 paths. So these are materials that are available as a sponsor of a new club that you can, you can access in order to um, help start a new club. Next slide, please. Okay, what opportunities are there for being a club sponsor? Basically, what opportunities are in this? And, and this is where this culminates in leadership skills. This is an opportunity to further enhance your leadership skills. As experienced Toastmasters interested in expanding the clubs in this district, um, this could help you not only uh, to 
see, I lost my spot here. Okay, this, this would help in many areas, not only in speaking to existing Toastmasters about starting new clubs, but also when you have a non-Toastmaster opportunity, such as a corporation, perhaps your workplace, which is outside of Toastmasters, there's an opportunity to guide non-Toastmasters through what Toastmasters is about and how, how to start, uh, start a club. And this is where you use your Toastmasters voice to fine tune your communication skills, what you've learned about Toastmasters and how to explain that, what Toastmasters is about and a, an opportunity to really display your leadership skills. Opportunities for opening clubs, this takes planning and you've all experienced setting up meetings uh, and that would go, that would extend into um, your demo meetings. Organizing a demo meeting has many components to it. It's not only determining who you're presenting that demo meeting for and who the audience is, as well as finding those resources, people that are available, Toastmasters that are available during the day, perhaps when typically most of your demo meetings take place, as well as ge geographically located in an area where you can get to. Uh, experienced Toastmasters can get to those demo meetings. Next is, is marketing. It's really knowing your audience. As I mentioned before, knowing what their needs are. And let's say you're working with a, a company who wants to start a Toastmasters Club. It's really keying in on that company. What are they about? What are some of the objectives that they might have for starting a club? And as a sponsor, you would want to go in and talk with them. It's most, it's, typically, it's best to see, meet them face to face and determine what their objectives are, what do they need, and establishing that relationship before setting up a demo meeting. Many times there are opportunities to bring in experienced Toastmasters that might have some experience in that industry or be able to speak to some of those objectives that the company has. So that initial meeting is really a good opportunity to make that, that contact. But it's knowing your audience and knowing how to set up that meeting. Not every demo meeting is alike. Okay, next is teamwork. Ask questions. There's there are a number of opportunities to where you'll be asked questions yourself and you may not know the answers. There are Toastmasters in not only in the club growth team, but they're experienced Toastmasters throughout the district that you could reach out to to determine, get information. If you're not sure about something, the best thing is to ask because we're making it's there isn't a second opportunity to make a first impression. So we want to have a solid a response for those that are looking at starting a Toastmasters club. So there are, there are many opportunities to really build on your skills. And this is a, an opportunity to really fine tune, kind of hone everything that you've accomplished in Toastmasters so far. Next slide, please. So what are your responsibilities as a sponsor? One, it's to establish those meetings, is to make that first contact. And now in, in this, this year, our club growth director will make that first contact. And then if there's a determination that the club, that there is a real interest in a club, and this would be specifically perhaps for a corporate club, then the club extension chair would make that contact. Perhaps if there is a sponsor that is already interested, the club extension chair can bring along the sponsor. Now there are some clubs in the district that are being formed by experienced Toastmasters to decide that well, there is an opportunity at their workplace and they will go in and go ahead and establish a, a club, start meetings and look at starting a club and build that interest. So they, and typically meetings are started um, in, that, in, that, in that scenario. There are some community clubs that a group of Toastmasters may get together and decide that there is an opportunity to build a club. So it's really the sponsor is the guiding force in establishing that interest and setting up meetings. Many sponsors will attempt to do a demo meeting on their own, but 
you need to know that there is a team available to help with demo meetings. So if you're in a, if you're in a sponsor situation and you are you want to set up a demo meeting, please reach out to new clubs and we can schedule a demo meeting and and help you either bring in an entire demo team or coordinate with you and fill in where you need um, assistance with setting up a full agenda of functionary roles. In fact, that's something that well, we established the other just last couple of weeks ago where there was a sponsor who had already planned to do a demo meeting, just had some gaps in the agenda, and we were able to go in and fill in with a, with a Toastmaster as well as a general evaluator. So this is a team effort. So please reach out when there is an opportunity to build a new club because we're here to support you. And this is the part that everyone asks questions about. The next one is completing charter forms. In the how to build a new club, kit, which you'll have that resource um, information at the end of this um, at the end of this call, but that will give you the entire packet of how the process for starting a new club, as well as all the forms from one to six B. Typically, what happens in in a in a uh, charter situation is that once there's a determination that there is a there is an opportunity to start a club in a corporate situation sometimes you'll be contacted by someone who was assigned the opportunity to start a toastmasters club they have no information about toastmasters they're asked to source that information come back to the company and report on what's available and then the company will decide whether they are interested in starting a club so there's that informational part on or in some situations in other situations there is a a company that has decided they know about toastmasters hr is behind it they're ready to start they just need to have a demo meeting and start uh, distributing the sign up sheets uh, to get their 20 members to start to charter so there's different scenarios to that uh, however the the best thing to do in a situation with a, a new club is really to determine where they are and how much information they have. And as a sponsor, many times you're the source of what is Toastmasters? And being in that position to explain what it really means to you and perhaps how you got started in Toastmasters, but really explaining what it's about. And then suggesting that you bring in perhaps a demo meeting at that point and that the demo meeting is used as a way to explain what is toastmasters and what is that experience like in other situations they just need to know that there's a demo meeting and here's a good solid format for conducting a meeting so a lot of this is really determining what the need is at that particular in that particular situation um let's see for community clubs one of the things the big challenges for a community club is really to for a, for a community club, it's really to determine how to find those 20 charter members. So it's really having, being able to demonstrate energized, exciting meetings so the visitors can be invited to that meeting, find that it's, interest, it's interesting, it's something enjoyable that they want to join. They can use that as an opportunity to, uh, to get charter member signups. Um, let's see, for and to, to follow up, just for information, as a sponsor, you may go ahead and um, assist the new club with submitting the application to organize. Now, once a new club submits that application to organize, which is Form 1, along with a payment of $125 to charter, Toastmasters International will send a new club kit, and that gives them the timing cards, some brochures and information, as well as um, other, as well as a gavel, by the way, um, to conduct a meeting. So they can start conducting meetings in order to build that club to 20 charter members in order to um, to achieve their their chartering. And a note to make is that when that is submitted a and accepted, that club will have one year to complete their charter. 
And this is their opportunity to really build on that and also to notify club, the club growth team so we can provide that support on what they need in order to build that club. Let's see. And in order to keep their in order to keep their meetings in order to keep their meetings going. Now we have some clubs that are once they've submitted that 125 and the form one, they'll be on a prospective club list. And we note that some clubs will get to that year point and still be a few members short of that charter. Um, there is an opportunity to extend, to ask Toastmasters International for an extension, but we really encourage new clubs to charter within the, within the first year. Okay, so follow up, that's something that these, uh, sponsor club sponsor would need to do is to keep an eye on that time period for chartering and making sure that the energy and meetings are happening and that if there are any challenges to help that new club resolve those issues so that they can complete their charter. Um, next slide. So what are the rewards of being a club sponsor? This is an opportunity to expand your leadership skills, to fine tune them, and to really become the promoters of the future of Toastmasters. The future of this district really depends on building new and successful clubs. And this is, this is a, a next bullet point. We'll continue. <laughs> okay. And when the other reward is it's number one is not only having honing your leadership skills, it's helping to build the future of this district, but you get credit for the service. So you are awarded credit for sponsoring club when the club charters. And timing is important on this because it, it varies. It could be as quickly as two to three months. Some of the new clubs are ready to go and they can charter within two to three months. Some will take a year or more, but note that if you're in need of that sponsorship by the traditional DTM deadline of June the, tw June the 30th, 2020, it does take potentially two to three months and some have even taken more than a year. But that is, but as a sponsor, you have control over that. There is a possibility if you work at it, you, you can get that sponsorship. And once that club is chartered, then you're awarded that sponsorship and given credit for that service. Okay, so next slide. Okay, so if you're interested, please send an email to newclubs at actoastmasters.org and let us know why you want to serve as a, toast, as a sponsor, what your credentials are, your education awards, as well as information about the number of years you've been a Toastmaster, your experience as club officers, and your availability for club meetings and demos. And the reason I have this here is that it's important for an opportunity, if you're looking for that opportunity for a mentorship or even a sponsorship is to keep in touch with us at Club Growth, Club Extension to see what's going on, what's new and what where's some of the new club interests. There are opportunities to, if you participate in demos, that's a great opportunity to look at. Is there an interest in this particular club? Is it a club that perhaps is starting in your geographic area? But these are opportunities to build those relationships so that there'll be a sponsor opportunity if that one comes up. And let's say there's a situation where we have a corporate club that we're starting and we need a toast, an experienced Toastmaster to be a sponsor, there's an opportunity for you. But one way to know what's going on is to let us know, send us that email, as well as let us know what your availability is to help with demo meetings. Okay, this section is about mentoring, what it means to be a club mentor. And there again, we emphasize you're a member of a team. We want to emphasize that if you are interested in, in mentoring, there's support for you. 
uh, make sure that club growth and club extension are aware of your interest. Uh, we will support with information and resources. One great way to be a member of a team is to start out as a demo me team member. And in that sign up, make sure you let us know your availability so that we can schedule you in, contact you if we have a demo meeting in your available time frame. The other thing is that for every new club, there are spots for two mentors. And it's great to have two mentors for a new club because you can work in tandem. So I know that time is, is of an essence for everyone. So if you have, you can work with another mentor. If somebody can't make a meeting, the other mentor can attend. And so the team is, so the new club is covered. One thing to, to know about a new club is that as a mentor, you're really attending every meeting in order to get them established. For many of us you'll, you know, who are members of a club, when you start out, you always rely on that experienced Toastmaster or more than perhaps maybe there's three Toastmasters in the club experience. You rely on them to kind of guide the club through answering questions. If something comes up, they're the ones with the, with the answers or with the support. And that's what you're doing as a new club mentor. Assuming you have a club of everyone is a new Toastmaster. So you're the one that's providing that insight and information. So it's great to have two mentor mentors. And those two mentors will be appointed by, uh, the, by the district. Okay. And as a mentor, you're a guide to this new club success by sharing your knowledge and expertise. You're giving them a great opportunity to become successful, to become distinguished. By sharing your knowledge, basically tutoring the club, you're helping them to hit all the marks, to know when dues renewals are due, and to give them that advance notice so that they have time to get the communication out to all of their members, uh, opportunity to let them know when the contests are, when you have TLI. It's just that added reinforcement. And we know that we rely on area directors to provide a lot of that communication for clubs. But as a mentor, you're attending meetings and you'll know as the calendar rolls around that a TLI is coming up or a um, or club dues renewals are coming up or there's a membership drive on the calendar. It's a good opportunity to let the club know that. And if you haven't heard, you can guide them to where they can get that information off of the district fee website or to contact the area director for that information. So you're really the guide to that successful club. If that club receives a good foundation with a better opportunity of having a quality club, that becomes distinguished. Okay. One of the resources that will be in the resource guide is something called a Toastmaster wears many hats. And that provides a guide for and a description for all of the roles, functionary roles in a meeting. And that's a great resource for many of us. It's a, it's a review of what we've learned in our clubs, but that's a great resource. Also, as a club mentor, you're going to be asked questions when something comes up. And it, if you have the answer, that's great. If you're not sure, good opportunity to say you will check on that and then get back to the club immediately or follow up with an email the following day. But it's always good to check on the information and make sure it's accurate. And there are always resources out there, not only Toastmasters International website, but um, many Toastmasters throughout the district can help answer those, those questions. Okay, next slide. Okay, what okay, opportunities for being a club mentor? This is another opportunity where sharing your expertise helps you really fine tune your skills. It's a great way to share what you've learned, some of the experiences that you've had and questions that you've had answered for you. It's a great way to share that so that a new club doesn't have to search out that answer just like you had to perhaps. It's also an opportunity to kind of watch a club. 
as you're attending their meetings. If you see things kind of slowing down, then you know that maybe at your club, your club kind of gave the meeting a boost by setting up a theme. Uh, maybe you did a crazy hat meeting, or there's an opportunity if there's someone who's really great at tracking jokes, maybe you add that joke master opportunity. A uh, club I know the other day uh, did a mentor minute. Maybe that works for a, say, a corporate club in a business setting. There might be some tips that are helpful. So these are little things that you read by kind of the nature of that of the club. So it's sharing your knowledge and your experience from clubs that you've been in. Next, it's also an opportunity to really translate what our core values and how to bring them into action. We have, for example, um, integrity. We all know as Toastmasters, integrity is the first thing of, of the core values. And it's really following up and making sure that things are handled correctly, that we do what we're going to say. It's just really having that integrity to follow up. The second point is respect. We obviously we respect one another. And the third one is service, which is part of what you would be doing as a club mentor is really extending yourself into the service of not only the organization, but really it's an opportunity to um, really build your personal skills as well. And excellence. Now we all strive to have excellent meetings, to have complete projects in an excellent manner. And just meeting the goal isn't enough, but we achieve, we strive to be really excellent. Okay, the other point in opportunities are leadership. It's really an opportunity to kind of fine tune. Sometimes there's an opportunity to really help a club and you see a point that you want to make, but it's being able to craft a suggestion to a group that's not aware in a tactful way. Sometimes it's, you have to go in with a point of order, but in other times there are ways to offer up the information. If it isn't urgent, you might look at speaking to the president of the club, after the meeting and something that they can incorporate at a later at a later time so it's really reading from a leadership perspective how do you interject that information how do you help a club and then team building it's really how do you build a team to grow that membership it's really rallying the club around just to bringing in guests friends so they are having such a enjoyable meeting and they're really seeing that they're achieving something that they're seeing an opportunity to bring in guests and help build the membership and really it's about it's about the team if there's just one individual that's always out there soliciting new members they tend to be it, it's not as much fun and it's also not as as encouraging to have just one individual that's what the team really focused on a goal of really always building the club and retaining the club. Next slide. Okay. So what's the mentor's responsibility? Okay. A mentor's responsibility is not only to share their experience to help the club build productive and successful meetings, and helping them with the information that they would need to do that. But it's really a, an opportunity to demonstrate communication and leadership skills. So you're leading by example. So it's taking what the knowledge you've gained over the years in attending Toastmasters meetings and events and how to run a meeting, how to answer questions, how to direct focus a new members through an education program, uh, through meeting attendance, functionary roles, helping them really become comfortable with all the roles in running a successful meeting. And communicating the foundation for that quality meeting. So you'll have three segments to the meeting. It's just making sure that the Toastmaster is aware that 
they are the MC of the of the meeting, the host of the meeting, and really guiding the kind of the education portion, which is introducing the prepared speech speakers, the prepared speeches, and then having the section for uh, table topics and which is the extemporaneous speaking section and really explaining kind of the opportunity to practice impromptu speaking. And then the third section that's guided by the general evaluator, which is for the that fact that Toastmasters are always looking at improvement and learning how to improve what we do, not only in meetings, but we also evaluate speeches because we're about practicing and, and improving upon what we're what we're doing. And providing, and through that, you really provide as a, as a mentor, you want to provide a basic agenda format and then adapt that agenda to meet kind of the culture of the club, but making sure that those three components are in the agenda and assisting the club in understanding how the transitions happen between each segment of the meeting and why we do that. Some of the questions that a mentor might answer is, um, why do I have to have, why does my icebreaker speech have to be four to six minutes? One of the things that we do is, is to practice on being able to judge how much information we can provide in, in a time frame. Well, that's why we have set times for the icebreaker speech, four to six minutes. Most speeches are five to seven minutes, and that's all to practice to really gauge our, our timing. Also, knowing that that table topics question is answered in one to two minutes. It's all that timing. And it's one of those things that you, you learn through practice and that's why, um, that's why we do that. So it's really explaining a lot of the whys behind why we have a meeting agenda and why the format is structured the way, the way it is. As mentors, we also provide it, that insight and explain why we have a dis distinguished club program and why we have those 10 goals. And explaining what a quality meeting is. At some point, may want to do, after, after a point in time, may want to do a moments of truth just to see uh, is the club tracking and covering all the bases. Or there's a quality club checklist that may be easier for some clubs to utilize, but it's really not only doing that training as a, me as a mentor, but also kind of evaluating what's been going on. Um, we also want to help the club understand that something we've learned is that open houses work in some cases, but most of our membership is really added, our mem new members are added through ongoing marketing and promotion is really keeping our our club information out there and having great meetings that are enjoyable so that someone who happens to visit says, this is great, I want to join. It's having that opportunity to, to really experience that. But that takes planning as well as organization. And that's where the mentor can help the new club. But if a new club is given a really good start, then we'll be building the district with successful clubs. And well, as um, one thing that we also want as, as mentors is really, really translating what you've learned in your clubs, giving that to a new club so they have that information. It would have been great. Think about it. It would have been great if you knew some of this when you started, but now you can share what you've learned with this new club and they get uh, an opportunity to really have a good beginning. Next slide. So what are the rewards of being a club mentor? It's the Toastmasters, your Toastmasters experience is enhanced. It's, you, I've learned a lot just by sharing information. It, it helps to solidify what, what I've learned as a, as a Toastmaster and really the, the, the value comes from really sharing that information. And the reward is from seeing a new club thrive. As a, as a new club mentor, it was really great to see that the club that I've 
helped as a new club mentor became distinguished and they've been distinguished every every year since so that's a real opportunity to see your 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 handiwork uh, building quality clubs that are successful is we have clubs that typically you know that that struggle but if they have a good foundation that they can fall back on there always there's always going to be turnover in membership but if you have the foundation you can always dig back in and say well what did we do back when we needed to energize the meeting well we did we had this theme or we had um we brought in a a speaker uh that we saw at one of the contests perhaps so there's ideas that that are generated if you have that foundation and the other benefit for a club mentor is that you'll receive credit for your service for six six months for serving six months or more now that six months begins when the club charters and potentially you can have and what you'll do at that six months is the club press the new club president can sign off on that at six months and when that's sent in to toastmasters international you would be awarded the your mentor your mentor award or credit note for those who are looking at the traditional dtm you'll need to be serving as for a chartered club as of december in order to get your six months in by june the 30th 2020. so this is something that um, if you're interested in in club mentorship please uh, let's go to the next slide sign up Send in your information to new clubs at aztoastmasters.org. That you want to serve as a mentor, why you want to serve as a mentor, your credentials, and give us your availability for club meetings and demos. The demos are really the best way to find out what's going on and to find out if there is an opportunity that's going to be a match for you. But this is a, a real opportunity to not only enrich your Toastmasters experience, but to help the district and to earn credit toward uh, DTM, if that is your focus. So let's take a five minute break. Well, let's say four minutes. We'll be back at 7.50 to start the coach portion of the training tonight. Okay, hopefully everyone had a chance to take a little break and we will get back to our program, moving on to the Club Coach 101 series. And I am Christy Hopper and we're 10 minutes ahead, so that's good. Get out of here faster. The first for the Club Coach program, I wanted to go over the eligibility and process frequently asked questions. And this is from both the perspective of a club, a struggling club that needs coaches and um, also Toastmasters who are interested in getting that coach credit for their DTM. So for a club to be eligible for coaches, they must have 12 or fewer members. If they have more than that, they're not eligible. And a club can have up to two coaches assigned to them at a time. And like Nancy had mentioned, I definitely recommend that if you are assigned to a, co a club as a coach and you're the only coach, you should consider recruiting a friend, a family member in Toastmasters, um, somebody that you know also needs to get a coach in credit for their DTM or for a second DTM and recruit them. Ask them to join, join your team and, and partner up and help you get that that get that club distinguished and, and help, help support that struggling club. The first step for a coach is to complete the coach application form. And many of you are currently assigned to clubs and have completed that form. And some of you are still looking for the perfect club and you've submitted that form. If you haven't submitted the form and you are interested in being a coach, that is the first step. Nothing moves past that. 
then once you submit the form, and many of you have experienced this, I've sent you information to visit clubs that are eligible in the areas that you have expressed an interest to support. And I've asked them to meet with the officers and visit the club a few times to get an objective experience and really find out if if this is going to be a good match if you're going to if you're going to feel comfortable guiding and supporting this group and then meet with the officers and talk to them about this opportunity and say you know i your club is very unique and interesting and i would really love to be a partner with you guys and and see if we can make it make it even better and stronger then once you've visited clubs and met with officers and chosen your club, you let me know and I will request approval for your appointment with the club president. The club president has to approve. It's got to be a relationship between the main, the main relationship is between the coach and the club president. The club president isn't always the main controller of a club. I, and I think we all know that. I've seen clubs where the president was just a figurehead. They filled a role, but they didn't really guide. They weren't the heart of the club. And you'll want to find those people and, and try to bring the president into that fold. But for official appointment, the club president has to approve it. And then at that point, the club coach is appointed by the club growth director or the district director, and the process will be sent to Postmasters World Headquarters, and they'll, they'll process it and you'll get assigned. Once assigned, only the president can remove a club coach. There is, there is another alternative I didn't put here. Club coaches can remove themselves. If you're serving as a club coach and it is just not going anywhere, if it's not working out, um, the club is really not interested in any support, any help, and you feel like you're wasting your time, you can, con you can send an email to Toastmasters International and, and you can contact me and I can give you the contact info. And you can ask them to remove your assignment. And that will, you can, you can then find another club to, uh, that, that will help, that you will work in this situation. You can be a coach for more than one club. You don't have to remove yourself from one club before becoming a coach to another club. But if you wanted to make that official and, and remove that assignment, you can do that yourself. And what I said in my slide here is that the president can remove a club coach. The president doesn't feel like the club coach is working out and that they're, they're really not supporting the club. Um, the president has the power to do that as well. So another thing to remember is that a coach cannot be a member of the club before they're assigned as a coach. So if, you're, if your own club is struggling, you can't coach your own club. And if you become a coach to another club, the last thing you should do is join the club. If you become a coach and join the club right away, you're adding to their base for next year. If, if the club and you do not get the, do not help the club reach a distinguished status by June 30th, you've now added another number to their base. So you should be the last one. If it's June 15th and they only need one more member to be distinguished, then consider joining the club. To get them that one number to be distinguished, but don't add to their base too early. There is a term limit to being a club coach. Your term ends on June 30th. So if you start being, if you start a coach assignment in May, your first term ends June 30th. And then you have one more term till the June 30th of the following year to earn, to complete the assignment and earn your credit. That's why I'm really hoping that more coaches join earlier in the year, like now, now in November. 
It gives you a little bit more time before June 30th. And the goal of a club coach is to help the club reach a minimum of distinguished status by that deadline. And to be distinguished, the club is supposed to add at least five members to their base and achieve five DCP goals. We hope for more. Now I want to talk about reasons why people should coach and what benefits you would receive from it. First of all, we're all in Toastmasters because we probably think it's fun and rewarding. And being a coach is also fun and rewarding. Being a coach for a struggling club definitely will develop your servant leader skills. You are a guide and a, you're sort of a guide, a coach, a mentor, all in one. You're there to help them and give them ideas and enable them to succeed, not by doing the work yourself. That's not what a servant leader does. A servant leader enables everyone to succeed. You'll develop team building skills and negotiation skills. In working with an entire club or even just the executive committee of the club, people don't agree on everything. There's going to be lots of opportunities for being a negotiator, for being building that team up and helping them succeed. And this is a great experience to share expertise. It's a little bit more involved than a mentor. A mentor only serves for six months and they get the club going. But you go into a club already established and they already have a very developed culture and you have to learn to work with that culture and share expertise. You have the opportunity to inspire and encourage others. We say in Toastmasters that leaders should model the way and this is being a coach is one way to model the way with clubs who are struggling. Clubs, clubs struggle for a reason and they might need just a little bit more inspiration and encouragement. Be a coach to invest in others and invest in the future of Toastmasters. We're all Toastmasters because it's important and I believe that our our core values are important to us and we want to share that with others. Being a coach definitely is an opportunity to invest in the organization and in other people. And the biggest reason is probably to get that cherished DTM. So let's talk about coach responsibilities. Your first responsibility would be to make a club connection and build rapport. And again, primarily this should be with the officers. The officers drive the club and make decisions and help the club make decisions. And working closely with the officers should then also help the club. You wanna gain the trust and respect of the club members and the officers. If they don't trust you and they don't respect you, they're not going to listen to you and they're not going to care about your opinion or your expertise. This is a relationship building opportunity. You'll use resources and skills to coach the club. And these are going to be resources and skills that you already have, resources and skills that you will hopefully gain through our intermittent SMAC trainings and any resources that we can provide. If you have questions, you need help with ideas, feel free to reach out to the team at any time. A coach will support and motivate. They're not there to force change. I think this is a big, this is a big point for Toastmasters. And you're there to help and enable the club, but you're not there to change them. You're there to strengthen them and guide them into learning how to be stronger themselves. A big goal 
A big responsibility of a club coach is to stay positive and focus on strengths. A big responsibility of the club coach is to attend meetings regularly and participate. If you're only going to a meeting every couple of months, I don't understand how you can gauge how well the club is, is growing or where, what help they need, where they need to focus on. So it is very important if you're a coach to attend regular meetings and participate. And again, we said to model the way and lead by example. Coaches should be promoting and supporting TLI and encouraging the club officers to attend TLI together and work on improving their club together. And lastly, coaches should promote and support pathways. If a coach is not supporting and promoting pathways, I don't think that the club is gonna be successful. This is the last year the club will have to work on the traditional education path. Any new member that joins today, their only option is pathways. And if a coach is going to really help a club, I think that this is where they need to spend a lot of their time becoming comfortable and familiar and knowledgeable as an ambassador for Pathways. And I am more than happy to help anyone who has any, any, any problems or questions. And if they feel like they need some more help before they can help promote and support it outside, we can set up webinars and we can we can help people learn what they what they need to know but we as coaches you really need to be familiar and promote and support pathways and be be able to answer questions because a lot of clubs clubs are struggling with this on struggling with getting new members enrolled on pathways and and down a path and even the um the older members the members who are who finished the traditional path and are a DTM, they need support in pathways as well. I have a, I guess it's a checklist um, that I will be providing to you guys um, after the meeting, and it breaks down the club coach into three categories: a good coach, a good coach and this is a coach that does the minimum basic responsibilities but gets the job done a better coach who exceeds the basics and the best coach and these will be it's it's a list of items i could actually probably pull it up since we have a little bit of time so all coaches should maintain a positive and respectful attitude and I really ask that they choose a club carefully and to assess a few clubs before making a decision. Visit twice before deciding and meet with the president and set expectations. And I also really encourage club coaches to attend all the virtual training and support sessions. So these are the breakdown of what I felt a good coach, a better coach and a best coach do. And I, again, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but I will send this to everyone um, after the meeting. And I also call out that a coach should only join the club near the end of the term as a last resort. You wanna make sure that you're not adding to their base, but you also wanna make sure the club earns your membership. And then following, if you, if you help a club reach distinguished status by June 30th, I strongly recommend considering to remain a coach unofficially for six months to another year after a successful assignment. I see a lot of clubs get, get coaches, become distinguished, and then the news next due cycle, they're back in a situation where they need club coaches again, and it's a cycle every year, year after year. And I just wonder if a club coach stuck around for a little bit more just to make it ensure that 
that all of the tools and resources and the strengths that they instilled in the club, they really stick and the club continues to be strong long after the club coach leaves the club. And then on the second page of this document is a list of resources. Many of these resources I've already provided to all of my club coaches. Uh, there's videos, there's guides to rebuilding clubs, strengthening clubs, um, information on the Distinguished Club Program, Moments of Truth. And then there's also some information that Liz Shaw had provided in her um, Coaching Your Club to Success at TLI, which was about motivational interviewing and about goal setting. Goal setting with the, as a, as a coach, you should help the officers set goals and then work to achieve those goals. So these are just some in, very interesting additional learning um, tools at the bottom. Um, and these, these skills, if you were to, to learn these and, and practice them, they would help in many, many different life situations, not just being a club coach and Toastmasters. We'll go back to our presentation. And again, these are all of the resources that I've provided and you can find so much more on the web. All of these will be available to you after the after the the presentation, and that is where we end with the club coach program. I will unmute everybody if anyone has any questions. No questions. Uh, this is Michael, nothing for me. Okay. All right, I guess one last thing I would like to ask everyone is um, for the next training session, which we may have um, November or possibly early December, are there any subjects or any issues that you would like to tackle going into that? It's for club coaches, you, you've been assigned recently, you know, you'll have a good couple of months under your belt with the clubs and you'll probably have lots of questions and issues to talk about then, but any, any ideas just off the top of your head right now? Um, Christy, there's a question in the chat um, oh. from Catherine. What if, what if the officers do not get along? Are there resources? Um, Catherine, I... Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head if there are resources, but we we can certainly work on that. That's a good question. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. Are you are you specifically referring to um, like Toastmasters guidelines, or are you looking for like um, mediation resources? Yeah, like mediation resources. We've only met with them once, and it was well met with them separately, and it was clear that there were personality conflicts and issues with regard to who's, who has authority to make decisions. Mm. So it seems like it's going to be a little you know, challenging. We didn't know this whole go visit a club twice thing. For, <laughs> we were assigned <laughs> to the club without having visited. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember your situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, again, I would like to stress that if it's not working out, it is, this is, you, you didn't marry these people, okay? You, it's, it's an easy out, and there are lots of clubs that would love help. So if, if I mean, it's, don't wait too long to make a decision, because you can always coach another club. And if you're, if you are looking for your DTM, coming June 30th in the traditional program, I strongly recommend that you consider coaching more than one club, that you coach two clubs um, in case one doesn't make it, you've got a backup. Okay, great suggestion. And partner up with friends, ask other people to coach with you. It's always, you know. Yeah, I think Jill, Jill's on the line. I think she, she's my coach. Yep. Yeah, you guys are. Yeah, you're in a good situation. 
Hello, Christy. I do have a question. This is Michael Milan with. Um, okay, good. I'm area director four. And I have a new club coaching assignment, and that's with fearless speakers. Yes. And so, uh, may I ask um, maybe um, some, see if you can add some assistance or someone online that can help out in respect to, since this is a new club coaching assignment, we only have one officer and we're, we're thinking about reaching out to local businesses. And I wanted to see if anyone, any other club officers or ever directors have had any success or Christy, if you have any suggestions um, to reach out to surrounding businesses to, to give them just maybe an information packet, uh, do a presentation to them, something along that line. But um, since we only have a, a base right now of two individuals, we're really trying to reach out to just whatever ideas we can get to try to build that base of membership. Yeah, I think that when you're sort of starting from scratch at that point, um, it really it really requires a few different people working pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're talking like boots on the ground situation. You have to pound the pavement. Mm -hmm. um, I know that from my, my personal experience with uh, community clubs is yeah, going door to door with businesses and handing out flyers and information packets and even, even cold calling ones in the area that you think could benefit um, and asking for 15 minutes with their HR person. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, 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 it's a, it's an investment in time, especially when you only have two or three people. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we're, tr I'm still trying to get one more coach for that club. Um, uh, I thought we did have another coach. Um, well, that, that, would be, that would be Jerry and he hasn't, he hasn't sent in his application. Yet. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, we can certainly give you ideas and resources for, you know, putting, putting information packets okay. together and, and presentations. Okay. Um, it, Excellent. It takes I'll, I'll, time I'll, investment. Yeah. Okay. No, those are good suggestions, good thoughts. Okay. It just, um, it seems like it's going to be a lot of work <laughs> pounding the pavement and doing cold calling, which now that's fine. It's going to help us grow and it's yeah. going to be good in the long run. So excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is Nancy. If you have an idea of some of the organizations or businesses that you're thinking about approaching, you might look at perhaps, um, establishing a, a topic or a theme for the meeting and do something where there is a, maybe there's a speaker on a topic that is of interest to that company at this, at this particular time. Maybe it's asking them some questions and if you're going to re reach out to HR, maybe there are some topics that what's the company working on? Are they mm -hmm. working on, um, you know, on leadership? Are they working on um, team building? And if you do like a series and promote that, and you could actually promote that widely throughout the community, which you might find other folks that are interested, but if it's topics that are of interest, many times you can get someone to walk in um, just to um, hear about that, uh, about that talk and maybe promote it as a series or something and see if you can get some ongoing visitors, but looking at topics that are of interest to the audience that you're trying to attract as members to the club. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for that. That's great. Any other questions? Okay. I think we're moving along. So we'll just have our closing. Um, this is the contact information for the club growth director, David Hopper, the club extension chair, Nancy Duckett, and the club coach chair, Christy Hopper. One last time, this information will again be provided to all of the participants and everyone who was invited. By the way, there was like 45 people invited to this training flight. So please contact us if you have any questions or you need any help. And that's all, we'll give everyone back their evening. Thank you all for participating. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.